I was the world's best golfer at 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020 I got runner-up, and 2021 I won again. Bento is probably one of the most advanced 11-year-olds that I've ever met. He eats, sleeps, lives, and breathes golf. He works hard in the gym. I know he works hard on the golf course, and I mean, the results show for it, right? Kid works incredibly hard, and uh, he has a huge passion to win. Let's, we'll say that. Bento Asis. Bento Asis. Bento Asis. There's no limit to what he's going to do. I'm sure Bento's going to play golf for a living. I'm Bento Assis. I'm 11 years old and I play golf. Hey, Jim. Hey. How you doing? Good. How you feeling? Good. Any pains? No. No? Okay. Let me know how it feels. So remember, hold it like you're holding a club. Yeah. You're gonna stand sideways like that, and you're gonna come down just like that. So where you're making contact with the golf ball, remember that, okay? Yeah. My job, it's more so to kind of give him a workout, but at the same time, stretch him out a little bit. He's still young, so I can't really load his joints with a lot of weight. Today, we're just gonna keep it a little bit uh, high intensity, but also a little bit of rotation, stretch him out a little bit. I like training with Sam because uh, he lets me box in the end. When I'm boxing, I like um, when I hit the pads from my coach. It's just loud and the whole gym can hear it. People think that golf, you literally just holding a stick, swinging at a ball, and then that's it. You, there's so many things that go into it. So this right here helps with the coordination. And also he likes to beat me up. So there we go. You saw what I just put him through, so. <laughs> I like golf because I make a lot of friends when I play tournaments. I love when I hit the ball next to the flag with this little spin. He started when he was uh, two years old. He started hitting some balls in driving range and uh, he loved it. He asked me to bring him to the drive range to hit some balls. It's like one, two, three hours. A few golfers that I met was uh, Justin Thomas, Matthew Wolf, Colin Murakawa, and I, that's it. Me, Tiger Woods. And Tiger Woods. I look up to Jordan Spieth. Hey Bento, it's Jordan here. Wanted to say um, your story is, is what's great about the game. Uh, thank you very much for uh, enjoying watching me play and having that inspire you. Uh, that was how I got inspired, was watching these guys that I'm playing against now. And I hope to meet you as well soon and, and certainly see you out on tour at some point. Bento. Hey. How are you today? Good, and you? Good, man. I have seen you since you were in New York skiing. You have a tournament coming this weekend. So let's just go over some basic things, make sure everything's on track. Today we're working on just making sure that some of his fundamentals are staying on track. One of the key things for Bento is his alignment. And so we're always working on making sure that he's set up properly towards the hole. And I first met him actually almost five years ago to the day, I think. You know, he won the world championships that year, and then he won the next year, and he won the next year. When he was only nine, he finished second place in the Worlds, and then I caddied for him this year, and he won. So my role is very supportive for him, and to try to keep him in the present when he's playing and make sure he's focused. Yep. Just left of our line. There you go. Loving it. Loving it. Bingo, baby! When you teach a kid like Bento, the, the main thing a coach has to do, which Rick has done a great job of, you have to challenge them. Every day that we see Bento, we have to present a different, more difficult challenge so the growth continues. If he keeps doing that, uh, there's no limit on this guy. To get to the highest level, you have to be tested, you have to be nurtured, you have to learn how to handle the mental and physical aspects of everything you're gonna be asked to do. 
He's always been a superior ball striker. Um, so when, ever since I've known him, I mean, I, we used to go out, we'd go out on the course and Bento would just destroy it every single time, like pro-like type stuff, you know, like he'd hit the ball first every single time, center face, center contact. It always seems like Bento's just a step ahead, mentally, uh, especially and drive-wise, those are the keys to his success, and we're just gonna keep breeding that as much as we can and let Bento be Bento, basically. I actually play in a lot of tours. I think this one was the first medal I won on the US Kids. And this is a Ronaldo jersey. He signed it for me. This 2021 uh, World Championship trophy was last year. Uh, my score was one over, 10 under, five under. This one was the first world championship I won. This one was the second world championship I won, and this was the third world championship I won. I'm very proud of him because he's a amazing kid. Everything that he tried to, to do, he tried to do his best. Yeah, I'm proud because I know uh, how hard he works every day and uh, his passion for the game of golf. I like skateboarding, I like uh, scootering, I like pickleball, I like tennis, I like soccer, I like basketball. I'm reading a book now. They said like when you fail, it's always like kind of better. You can't be sad when you fail because it pushes you more. And I agree with that because sometimes when I lose, I pr always practice more. So what does Bento have that differentiates him from the other 11-year-olds? He has a very, uh, they call it proprioception. He really has a great understanding of how he moves. And he's very mature for his age. And so those present tremendous advantages for him over competitors near his age. Whether he becomes, you know, the next Tiger Woods, you know, whether he becomes the next world champion or the next you know masters winner or whatever the case may be I just want him to be the best version of himself. When I train a lot of people say nice swing and stuff and I get I get hyped and I practice more and more and I'm just confident I'm gonna be in PGA Tour one day. Bento will be in PGA one day. First hole in one was 180 Hit a hybrid. Bounce and When he was about three or four, he came up, shook my hand, and he's, you know, I'm Zebby Perez. Nice to meet you. I'm going to win the Masters one day. Just to watch him grow as a golfer, it's unbelievable. I approach the game in more of a strategic method, more like chess. Even when I'm playing with kids, you know, twice my size, I never back down. I hold my own and never get nervous. When you got a 15-footer putt, you're in a playoff, and the kid's twice your size, and you drain the putt. It's the best feeling in the world. The three, he was already in tournaments playing in the five-day old division and winning. He got so many trophies now. We don't want no more trophies because we don't have no more cases to put him in. Every day I thank God that he's in our life. He just keeps us young, he keeps us going. God gave me a second chance and say, okay, whatever you didn't do and you think you could have done better with your daughter, now is your opportunity to do it and here's Sebi. My name is Xavier Zevi Perez Martinez. I'm 11 years old. I go by Zevi. It comes from one of the first Spanish golfers, Zevi Ballesteros. He was a very, very great golfer. He didn't come from a lot of money, but it pushed him and motivated him. And they made a documentary about him. I watched the documentary hundreds of times. Everything was like Zevi Ballesteros. Like Sevi Ballesteros. Look, I can hit this shot like Sevi Ballesteros. So we started calling him, yeah, Sevi. And we've been calling that ever since. Stuck yeah. like glue ever since. That's a draw. My own pre-shot routine, mainly what I do is I get behind the ball, probably about six feet, and I just play the shot in my head and play out every part I can. If I hit a draw, the circumstances of me hitting it bad are pretty high. If I hit a fade, now that's going to be straight down the middle. After that, I'm right-hand dominant. I set up, I lock my knees before, you know, I'm not even about to swing. I break them a bit. 
After that, I grip it. I probably re-grip about two, two or three times just to ensure I got good grip. I take one look and let it rip. Pretty much easy as one, two, three. So I got my sandwich. I'm gonna have to fly it up, probably about bounce it. Green's being pretty fast. Probably gonna have to bounce it about, probably right around this spot and just let it roll in straight to the hole. This is about one, two, three, four. So it's approximately four feet long. So probably on this putt, I'm probably gonna have to hit it below inside cup. And bam, put it in, no stress. Golf is playing the foulest weather. You know, if it's raining and it's pouring, you gotta play through that. That's gonna affect the ground. Another enemy of the golf course is water by far. So if you hit in the water, stroke penalty. When it comes to sand shots, when you got like a little 30 yard shot, if you hit it too soft and you catch the ground at the wrong time, you could just be duffing out only 10 feet. You'll skull it straight over the green. Another hard part is course conditions. Wind's blowing 15 miles per hour. It's going left, right, left, right, right, left. The wind's gonna take the ball straight off to the side. All right, you ready to get this party started? Yes, sir. All right, let's start with some squats here. Good. We are K2 Stretch, located in Evans, Georgia. That's about five to 10 minutes right outside of the beautiful Augusta, Georgia. He's loading and deloading through a golf swing on individual parts of, the, of, the, of his legs. So the back swing obviously is from the right leg going through to the left leg. So we want to have both of them to be e evenly and equally supported. Good. And then we add rotation for his core strength and balance as well as overall stability. So we're gonna do some general stretching. He's gonna work on breathing as we stretch. So we're just gonna start with some basic stuff just to see where his mobility is at. So we'll just work on make sure the hips are moving properly, make sure he gets the maximum out of his swings. When he was four or five years old, we used to hit balls from that corner of the fence and we used to put them in an empty lot right here. One day my neighbor came with a big box of balls and he said, here, I got these balls for you. And I'm like, geez, thank you, you didn't have to do that. He said, these are all the balls that landed in my swimming pool. <laughs> I do care more about my driving because I got to be accurate. But at the same time, you know, you got to sharpen your short game too. So I'll demonstrate one and show you how I'm doing. Oh, a little too powerful there. Um, now he's rolling. That's, that's what the goal is, to get him to where he can look at a spot in the ground and hit the ball in. At two years old, all he wanted to do was play golf. We'll take him in the golf cart and he'll play three holes. He'll get sleepy, take a nap, and then wake up and finish up the rest of the holes that he had left. At three, he demanded to play in a tournament. The first tournament he played, he won, and he won 39 matches straight. He goes out now and play with grown men. This is my training room. You can see here I got a whole simulation room. It runs through um, Skytrack so I can hit balls every day, every night, rain or shine. My friend Mr. Steve here built it probably when I was about eight, eight to nine years old. When I first saw a swing, I was like, wow. At, at that age, his hand-eye coordination is something you've never seen before. 145 carry, right out of the money. Remember, carry distance is the key, not total. He got it. It's our miracle baby. <laughs> I served in the, in the Army as an Army Ranger for many, many, many years. I retired with 33 years of active military service. I was always gone. Christine raised three girls basically on home. I always felt very bad about that. I think we were in, in was it Kansas, Fort Leavenworth? We were there for an Army training. I was pregnant and we didn't expect that. But um, then they said, um, good news and bad news. You are pregnant. And the bad news is you have cancer. Because you have cancer, it's stage two cancer. We gotta go immediately and do surgery to remove the cancer. You're gonna have to terminate the pregnancy. I just said, whatever the challenge was, I wanted to keep this yeah, baby. She, she, I was willing to accept the challenge. I just said, I'm gonna have this baby. This baby saved me. My mom is a saint. She's the world to me. She's the one who keeps me in line and say, hey, Stay humble. She helps me with my school. She helps me with golf. She drives me to all the tournaments. And Papa, before I had my coaches, he was my coach. If I'm, you know, I'm like, dang, I could do better. 
He's the one who says, hey, it's all right. It's just a game. And I'm just very blessed to have two loving, dedicated parents on my side. My proudest moment would be International Junior Masters. I was playing from 15 to 18 age division. I was the youngest contestant since 1953. I didn't do so hard on the first few days, but on the second day, I was able to make up on my second round. That got me seat at a high flight, and we went into elimination chamber. I'm very proud of my last name, Perez. I am very proud of my heritage, too, you know. Puerto Rican, Hawaiian, Samoan, Filipino. I can even go on. I got I got a lot of genes. And I'm just, you know, I'm blessed and proud to have my last my last name, Perez. Xavier Perez, el apellido Perez, es algo que usted va a llevar en alto a su patria de Puerto Rico. Y siempre va a tener ese orgullo de la familia Perez y de Puerto Rico en tu corazón. <laughs> <laughs> I started when I started walking, so I was probably about like one or so. He would hit a couple hundred balls a day, every day, starting at 14, 15, 16 months old, right after he could walk. I call him like a kind of a quiet assassin. At three, um, I got my first real set of clubs. Made it. Then at five, I started my first tournament and missed second place by one stroke. That was your first tournament? First tournament. Wow. I mean, he's 10 years old, he's four and a half feet tall, and he's driving 200 plus yards. Triple, double breaks, and he's just like, he's just making everything. You don't have team members to help you out. It's all about you. So we've got a really good, well-rounded game. When he's playing golf, he's all about playing the game. My name is Kaden West, I'm 10 years old, and I'm a golfer. Perfect. What we're involved in right now is a camp that runs for 11 weeks, and they work a lot on the aesthetics of golf and the swing, and they challenge each other. He's putting in five or six hours a week for 11 straight weeks here at the Academy. And I provide all of the snacks. <laughs> Very good. Awesome. His father got him playing at you know, before three years old and swinging a golf club. So he comes in with a lot of really good intuitive knowledge in the game. Dan's my swing coach and chipping coach. He helps me with different shots. I think if you ask Caden what he likes to do, he really likes to drive. Very good. I just want to focus on hitting a straight shot down the middle of the fairway and at least getting par. So now it should feel like the pro is pulling you through here, isn't it? That's good. Right now he's helping me with my swing. The foundation is strong. The fundamentals are good. He can hit all the golf shots. It's helping him learn how to do it more efficiently. Very good. See how much straighter that went? Yeah. a boy. So when I'm coaching Caden, my first job is to figure out how much he can kind of handle in a lesson. And most of it's polishing work, though. It's, it's about directing the momentum and letting it run in, yep. He's a fun coach. Okay, let's hit some balls. Today we worked mostly on the footwork and work in learning how to use the ground more efficiently to get, to get more energy in his swing, but to be more stable and consistent. After the lesson, he'll send me videos on this app called Coach Now, talk over it, what I'm doing wrong, and then he'll show me a swing of what I'm doing correct, and then I go on the range, uh, and then look at, those, look at those videos again, and then perfect that. See how you're staying more behind the ball now too? Yeah. Again, that goes back to patience too. It's like these little improvements take a little bit more time to get good at, but then they, they can be big, big difference makers down the road. That was a real golf ball. About 14 months old, I said, well, today's the day we're gonna hit a golf ball, and he hit it, and I have the video of it, and when he hit it, his face kind of lit up, and you can see the lighting up, and he just kind of did it on his own for the next month or so, single-handedly. And he would go outside and set down his own drills and, you know, make his own games and all of that. We made a deal with him very early on. We'll do everything we're supposed to do as your mom and dad, and as long as you're all in, we'll keep doing that. And that was when he was like five, and he's never not been all in. 
putting, you just have to take a subtle swing, not like you're swinging with a driver. You just take a subtle swing and try to get it near the hole or in the hole. Get your backstroke to be longer and use the momentum of the putter to hit the ball. So his putting coach is a guy named Brennan Amarkeese. Cascade was a pretty good putter, but he was a little erratic. And in the first lesson, he made a couple simple like hand moves with him and he just started dropping putts. Basically, his hands would go fall forward, so the club head would be pushed forward. You know, basically every time he got through and didn't drop, he was like, oh, okay. I was working on keeping my arm straight, keeping it straight right here, and then not going, letting it out, just keeping it straight. Caden usually comes back next lesson with, you know, obviously the things he's been working on that we went over last is definitely improved. Like just tuning up, going over we went last week to keep it consistent. Because if I just keep throwing things at him, you know, kids, you know, just be like, well, what, what do you want me to work on? And sometimes lessons repeat, but I mean, it's how you get better because golf's about consistency. Or as people say, who can miss it the best? So when Brennan kind of started massaging the swing, slowing his hips down, raising his hands, it became really, really effective. And they work really get good together. Kid's great, great listener. You can be kind of hard on him, which is good, because some kids you can't be, they'll fall back on the other way. Caden pound for pound hits it pretty far, so he's gotten a lot better with that, working with Dan. Right there, go. Yeah, that's it. But now as a 10-year-old, aside from the golf, he likes regular kid stuff. Besides golf, I like to play with my friends, hang out. These kids here, are they're all super close. But they're all really tight. So this is kind of like the team aspect that he doesn't get in such a singular sport. And the Legos. His Lego sets are not just, you know, eight-year-old Lego sets. <laughs> they are the 16-year-old plus. <laughs> The Harry Potter castle is 6,000 pieces. He did a Harry Potter castle, 6,000 pieces, and he started it and didn't stop until it was done. When Caden does something, he's all in. They both take time. With golf, you have to get a better swing, and that could take time, that could take a month, it could take a year, or it could take five minutes. With Legos, you could have a Lego that could take five minutes, a month, a year, a week. And that's, I'm kind of like the guy who builds bags, takes a break, puts it aside for the rest of the day, and then comes back tomorrow. He's very concentrated relative to his age. His ability to focus is really high. He's extremely coachable. Um, and so these are the characteristics of some of the best players I've worked with, whether they've been older or younger, that really leads to long-term success. 100% agree with being focused in everything he does outside of golf to golf. And I think that's what does make him so good. Golf takes a lot of patience. Golf is something you have to practice and put time and effort into what you're doing. I see in the future him winning many, many multi-day tournaments and, and being a really, really solid top ranked, uh, a nationally ranked top junior. Going forward, I mean, the kid's got a future if he sticks to it. So it's just, again, the whole honesty you know, golf keeps you honest, you know, just you be hard work, don't blame people and do your own thing. You're going to go far in this game. In the future, I'd like to win Pinehurst and I'd like to win a regional. My really long term goals are to get on the golf team at ASU and to at least get on the PGA Tour and win a major and get the Grand Slam. If he gets a D1 scholarship and plays that, that's fantastic. Anything after that, I think is beyond your wildest imaginations. But saying that, I really want him to win the Masters. <laughs> <laughs>